A report into the celebration stated that a serious breach of social distancing rules had occurred. Well, earlier in the Dáil, Sinn Féin's Pierce Doherty criticised the report and the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Simon Coveney. This is typical, uh, Ken Corley, in my view, of a minister now that is out of touch, that has been at the helm for too long, and that his judgment has been called into question now more and more often. I'm genuinely taken back by your tone and your attitude on this one. You are the deputy leader of a party um, that invited almost 2,000 members and supporters onto the streets of Belfast, and then to a political rally, essentially, in Biltown Cemetery, at a time when the ordinary men and women that you speak about were limited. In uniform, when the army men and women you're talking about were distraught because they couldn't attend the funeral of their loved ones. Well, still here in studio is Minister of State in the Department of Transport, Hildegard Nocton, People Before Profit, Solidarity TD, Mick Barry, and political editor for the Irish Independent, Philip Ryan. And Philip, 19 months on from this, what could now be considered that infamous get-together at the Department of Foreign Affairs, did this report by the current Secretary-General of that department bring clarity on what happened that night? In, in many respects, it was comprehensive, and it was quite cutting in some of its recommendations and some of its findings. And the current Secretary-General didn't really hold back in some of his comments on his predecessor, uh, Niall Burgess. He, he said he was responsible for the gathering. He said uh, he um, made life difficult or made uh, junior staff feel it put them in a more difficult situation mm -hmm. by getting them together for this picture. But it, there, there, there does seem to be some questions still left out there. Uh, for instance, like we were told, this wasn't planned, this isn't, wasn't impromptu, but you did have people showing up who were on maternity leave. There was plans put in place to, for watching the vote. They discussed where they would watch the vote. So they, they knew they were coming together to, to, to view this thing, uh, to, to, to see the vote come in. And they, they will try to uh, draw a demarcation and, and, and say there's a difference between that, the, that part to get together, and the fact that wine just suddenly appeared uh, once the vote and it was just you know, the, all the good feeling and, and uh, celebration that, mm -hmm. that it was almost accidentally that they started drinking glasses of champagne in the middle of the, the office. Yeah, questions too, um, and we heard Pierre Starty earlier also stating that, you know, within this report that Joe Hackett compiled, we didn't hear um, about the role of the Minister for Foreign Affairs in all of this, Simon Coveney. Now, he was there later on, and um, at that point, that, that selfie crowd, you know, that, that photo had taken place. Uh, but nonetheless, he was there and he, he would have known about the gathering. Um, so questions there to be answered, the opposition say. Well, I think it's very clear that Minister Coveney would be the first to say that that breach of uh, social distancing guidelines shouldn't have happened. Uh, this was people at work, in the workplace. Um, they were socially distanced and, for, and they came together for a selfie. And it was a moment of, I think, a, a really a misguided, misjudged moment. And it's important to say that Minister Coveney uh, came later in the evening uh, to thank uh, staff who had worked so hard that day on Ireland securing a place on the United Nations Council and left after 15 minutes, went back to his own office. So he was not part of that uh, um, event. And again, I think mm. we would all say that it shouldn't have happened. Minister Coveney has said that it was a serious breach of the guidelines and it was uh, reviewed and this was investigated by the accounting officer, which is the Secretary yeah. General, as should be, because this was a breach within a workplace and it is up to the Secretary General the fact, of the department. The fact the minister would have, would, have, would have known about it and there were no sanctions 19 months ago yeah. and it's and only come to light you know, in the past few weeks. Well, it came, it came to light around, around Christmas time um, and it's, it's dragging now into this month and the Minister, you know, having to clarify, you know, what he knew and why he didn't act and his handling of the matter. And I think um, Minister Coveney has, I suppose, been clear in that he asked the Secretary General to carry out a review. And it's important, I suppose, there is a distinction between, um, I suppose, accountability or any HR matters or staffing matters within, within the department. That is not a matter for any minister to um, instigate any kind of disciplinary proceedings. That is up to the, uh, the accounting officer, which is the Secretary General. And that was done. And I, even the Tisha today in the Dáil was, was very clear um, in relation to, I suppose, the facts that came out in that uh, report and I think as I say that the minister is accountable to the Oireachtas and uh, he will appear and I understand okay. the Oireachtas will be asking him to come there but it's a very important to say Minister Coveney was not part of that it was uh, members within the staff uh, within the department uh, who breached the regulations. I want to ask about that because you, you, you were shaking your head there when, when 
you know, Hildegard was explaining earlier, you know, the minister wasn't part of that celebration. Sure, OK. So uh, just a wee bit of context first, OK? Because this was at the same time as people who couldn't go to funerals of loved ones, uh, who had loved ones dying in nursing homes and they couldn't visit them. And that is the reason why people are so upset with the carry-on that we saw uh, in the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs. Um, you know, the Minister says that, uh, you know, you say that he, he is the first to say that it shouldn't have happened, right? Um, well, he knew about it fairly quickly, very slow to get an investigation underway. Then you have an in-house investigation of the civil servants investigating the civil servants, rather than an outside investigation, and the Minister isn't even interviewed. You know? The minister wasn't there, and this is the, the reason it, it is up to the Secretary General of the Department. It is the role of the accounting officer, who is the Secretary General of the Department, to, um, um, to instigate disciplinary um, proceedings. It is not the role of the minister. Sir Simon Coveney was not there. That's very clear. Um, at the time, he heard about it after the event, um, and it was up to the, I suppose the Secretary General, he understood, would deal with that. But I suppose knowing, and, and, and he, he, he did say this morning, he did say this morning, Minister Coveney did say this morning, knowing now of the issue that it has become after 18 months, he did ask then the, the now Secretary General to carry out a review, no. which is appropriate. That is his role. But, I mean, no. but the Minister is accountable absolutely to the Oireachtas, but it is up to the Secretary General, the, the, who is the accounting agent within um, any, any government department, to assess and to p carry out a review of the staff. So this, do you this, think this he's is done anything about no, just, just on that? Do you think now, because this report has been submitted before the Dáil Committee, um, uh, you know, the Oireachtas Committee on Foreign Affairs. So when he, you know, presents himself in front of that committee, what should he be asked? That's up to the members of the committee, what but it's do you very. Think? Do you think there are outstanding questions, or do you think this is case closed? I, I, I don't think concerned? there are. But if the, if the if the Iraq this committee, and that is their right, and Minister Coveney remains accountable to the Iraq this committee, he has gone before okay. them in the past, and he will do again. Okay. And I know he's been very open and, and transparent. We know he's and he's been I think before anybody, them in the past. anybody <laughs> who is knows that any any fair-minded okay. person will know that uh, Minister Simon Coveney is somebody of the highest integrity, a very right. hard worker, and is, um, has always been transparent and open. Okay. And he will be the first to say that this um, should not yes, have happened. And, 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 and it we was know a we've breach. heard his explanation around that. Um, Philip Bryan, when he does appear before that or this committee, um, what questions do you think need to be answered around well, the event? Well, the main one would be why didn't he do anything about this? Why did he know about this? He saw it happening. Uh, and like Deputy Barry said, it, it happened in the midst of, of what was still essentially lockdown in the country. You couldn't leave your county, um, you weren't supposed to go to work. You, you, there was, uh, you had to have be a, a, a serious essential reason to go into an office in the first place. Calling a few diplomats in other countries, I wouldn't have thought uh, justified that. The report says that was fine and that should be okay. But the, the main and overarching question for Simon Coveney is, you knew about this in June 2020, but you did nothing. And you only did something when the photo re-emerged and you were dragged kicking and screaming into carrying out a review.